Well, it seems like we've reached a bizarre point in American politics where the furthest right Republicans and Donald Trump have managed to, I guess, accidentally land on the same side of an issue as leftists like myself, albeit for very, very different reasons, mind you. But nonetheless, they are wanting an outcome that I also support, or at least they're saying that this is the outcome that they want when they're lying in actuality and just playing politics. So let me try to explain. Basically, for months now, Democrats have been wanting funding for Ukraine and Republicans have been saying no unless you give us something that you would never give us funding for the border. We want the wall and we want more money for ICE. And they thought that they were calling the Democratic Party's bluff because, I mean, during an election year, it's inconceivable that Democrats would ever support something so barbaric and draconian when their own base wouldn't like that. But Democrats, unbeknownst to them, don't actually care about their base. And they said, you know what? Fine. We'll give you barbaric immigration crackdowns if you give us funding for Ukraine. And now Republicans are in this awkward position to where they're having to do this tap dance and be like, oh, actually, even though if you look at the bill, it's very brutal, it's still bad. It still allows for crossing. So we have to oppose it on principle, even though we said we would support what you wanted if you support what we wanted. It's very bizarre. But let me go back and give you some more context so you understand why they're coming from this position, aside from stupidity. Basically, Republicans for years now have been pretending that Biden has instituted an open border policy, even though he's arguably as cruel as Trump, minus the family separation policy. Although he did consider detaining families at one point following the end of Title 42, which is a Trump-era policy that he used to justify deportations, but Biden also used that. But, I mean, there's been no shortage of cruelty towards immigrants under the Biden administration. Remember the thousands of desperate Haitians that were brutalized by Border Patrol on horseback and subsequently deported? That happened under Joseph Biden. Yeah. But despite this ruthless approach towards immigration, Republicans haven't stopped pretending that he's just opened the borders. It's preposterous to me. So, I mean, you would think that Biden by now would recognize that they will never be appeased, regardless of how Trumpian he gets, because they're just opposed to everything that he does for partisan purposes. It's not about policy for them. But rather than acknowledging this and changing his approach, Biden is instead choosing to double down on his policy of appeasing fascists, which, if you look to history, it's always worked out really well. And I say this because he's supporting a bipartisan immigration bill that is so right wing that even mainstream media pundits are calling it right wing. As Sahil Kapoor of NBC News puts it, as recently as months ago, it was unthinkable that President Biden and Democrats would endorse an immigration bill like this without any of their priorities on dreamers and legalization. The politics of this issue have shifted sharply to the right with the asylum system overwhelmed. And to make matters worse, guess what? The bill also includes funding for Israel's genocide in Gaza to the tune of $14 billion, by the way, which means that Democrats who support this legislation are now to the right of Ronald Reagan on the issues of immigration and Israel-Palestine, which says a lot about the trajectory that we've been on as a country for a while now and should alarm all of us. Now, if you're a liberal who was outraged by Trump's cruel policies, this is going to make you outraged if you are morally consistent. And any Democrat who supports this, they're just xenophobic, racist trash. But it's hard for Americans to know what's in it because it's a very long bill. So let me try to break it down for you and explain why this is something that the left is opposed to. As Politico explains, the bill would nearly double funding to ICE and give billions more to CBP. And on top of that, it would use money already allocated towards immigration to construct more walls on the border, i.e. Trump's border wall. And on top of that, it would distribute money to states dealing with an influx of migrants, which isn't necessarily bad. And it would also allocate $4 billion to citizenship and immigration services to speed up asylum claims, but also toughen asylum requirements and require asylum seekers to show proof that refuge in the U.S. is needed immediately. Otherwise, they get turned away. Now, it would also shut down the border entirely if crossings average 5,000 or exceed 8,500 per day. And this provision has confused a lot of people, but I think that Fox News correspondent Bill Malugan, who actually seems to support this, explains this provision in greater detail in a more fair way. So he writes this on Twitter, quote, at seven-day rolling average of 5,000 encounters per day, 
day or 8,500 encounters in a single day, DHS is required to shut the border down and turn away anyone who crosses. No new asylum claims will be allowed and anybody crossing will be removed. Would end the whole idea of, quote, I made it to U.S. soil, you have to process me. That would be over. Border Patrol would not process the illegal crosser and they would be removed. No asylum claim permitted unless it's made at a port of entry. This does not mean 5,000 are, quote, allowed in before this authority kicks in. Single adults would be detained. Families would be released via ATD, alternatives to detention, and asylum cases would be fast-tracked to months rather than years under a new rapid slash expedited expulsion system. Those who fail would be quickly removed from the U.S. Those who initially pass would be released with work authorization and 90 days supervision until final asylum claim is determined. The shutdown authority doesn't drop until crossings decrease significantly in the days following the shutdown. The border has seen at least 5,000 encounters almost every single day the last couple of years under Biden. If this bill were signed into law, the border would likely be shut down on the first day it takes effect. So this is basically a conservative saying, this bill is surprisingly good, right? He also concedes that there are things in there that people who are more humane towards immigrants would also support. And to be fair, that's true, right? But generally speaking, it is a drastically more punitive approach towards immigration that further criminalizes it overall. Now, it doesn't streamline the citizenship application process at all, nor does it give people already here asylum or a path to citizenship, even if they're already working and paying taxes here. But I mean, that's not to say that it's all negative, because as he said, there were some things that people who are doves on immigration would support. For example, 250,000 visas would be freed up for families of immigrants with H-1B visas, and asylum seekers might get work permits while their applications are being processed. So that's good. But overall, it doesn't even come close to being what the Democratic Party said they wanted, and it doesn't address the root causes. And it handles the issue of immigration in the same way that we handle all other issues in this country, by further criminalizing it and policing it more, which is why civil rights groups like the ACLU have come out against this legislation. It's cruel, it's barbaric, and it's a betrayal for the Democratic Party to support this after saying they're going to do things differently. Now, most people who are here illegally now actually entered legally and they just overstayed their visas. But since we make legal immigration very difficult, if not impossible in this country, people who already built lives here aren't just going to suddenly up and leave, nor should they. But rather than giving them a chance to become citizens, if they work really hard, this legislation just keeps them in limbo in perpetuity to appease Republicans. Furthermore, there will always be desperate people who have no choice but to cross the border illegally to escape violence so long as conditions around the globe continues to deteriorate thanks to a number of conditions, including late stage capitalism. But I mean, maybe if we didn't embolden cartels and gangs with our failed drug war and destabilize so many Latin American countries with decades of meddling, people wouldn't need to leave their countries and come here in the first place. But like all of us, immigrants are human beings just looking for a better life. But politicians have chosen to blame them instead of their own incompetence with regard to this issue. So as far as I'm concerned, Democrats and Republicans have failed on this issue. But here's where we get to the Republican Party having to do mental gymnastics and pretend like they don't support this, who scream about immigration the loudest. So Republicans, for the most part, have come out against this. And it's not because they suddenly grew hearts and they thought, mm, maybe it's really mean the way we've been treating these human beings. No, they're against it simply because they don't want to give Democrats a win. And they don't think that it's harsh enough. But on top of that, Trump also told them to be against it for the fact that he doesn't want to give Biden a win before an election. So there's a number of reasons why they're against this, but they're all political reasons for the most part. But ironically, nobody even realizes that them not supporting this is actually better for Biden, even if none of them realize it, because the people who voted for Biden you would imagine expect him to be more humane towards immigrants. So in a way, fascist Republicans in rejecting this bill managed to save Biden from himself and they inadvertently blocked Israel from getting more genocide money and on top of that, somehow triggered another round of infighting within the Republican Party that got very tense. So even though seeing so many Democrats and Republicans support this kind of like killed my soul, not that I was expecting 
any difference. But, you know, seeing them betray their base like this, it made me feel down. But then when you see the outcome and what this bill led to, the shitstorm that ensued, it made me happy. I'm not going to lie. But, I mean, that's assuming nothing changes and fascists really do choose to reject this legislation. But at this point in time, they're pretty much saying... This bill is DOA. In fact, that's literally what they're saying. Speaker Mike Johnson called the bill dead on arrival and said it's even worse than he imagined. Oh, sure it is. But hours earlier, he shared a clip of himself demanding Biden take action while chastising him for refusing to act. So he is pretending like Biden didn't just do exactly what he wanted Biden to do. And he's in effect rejecting a policy that he supports to spite Biden and appease Donald Trump. It's so fucking stupid. I mean, imagine if Trump proposed Medicare for all as president and the the leftists were like, no, I don't support that. You know, I want people to have health care, but I don't want him to have the political dub. I don't give a shit who supports the policy that I support. If it's good policy, it's good policy. So be objective and support it. Don't be a hack. But he's not doing that. I mean, Biden is giving him exactly what he wants. Maybe not everything he wants, because sure, they'd like it to be more draconian, but he's getting a huge win here, but he isn't supporting it because it's from Biden. They look so insane right now. But Mike Johnson isn't necessarily representative of the entire party because there are some Republicans who hate immigrants more than they love Trump, like Mitch McConnell and Mitt Romney and James Lankford. And they're now trying to reason with fellow fascists in their party by convincing them to support this barbaric bullshit while they have the chance, because once it's gone, they're not going to get a chance like this for a while. This is a humanitarian and security crisis of historic pr proportions. And Senate Republicans have assisted, not just for months, but for years, that this urgent crisis demanded action. Three months ago, we asked our colleague, Senator Langford, to lead that action. In just the time since Washington Democrats finally decided to join him at the negotiating table, the president's border crisis made history all over again. December saw the highest daily and monthly tallies of illegal border crossings ever on record. And it's now time for Congress to take action on supplemental national security legislation that finally meets those challenges head on. Oh, I, I, think, I think the border is a very important issue for uh, Donald Trump. Uh, and the fact that he would communicate to uh, Republican senators and Congress people that he doesn't want us to solve the border problem because he wants to blame uh, Biden for it is uh, is really appalling. But the, but the reality is that, that uh, we have a crisis at the border. The American people are suffering as a result of uh, what's happening at the border. Uh, and someone running for president ought to try and get the, uh, you know, the problem solved as opposed to saying, hey, save that problem. Don't solve it. Uh, let me take credit for solving it later. So they're taking a principled and consistent position here. They hate immigrants, and as haters of immigrants, this bill is a no-brainer. Sure, we could always be more cruel, but I mean, beggars can't be choosers, right? It's an election year, and to get Democrats to go along with this is insane. So the fact that Republicans don't want to take them up on this offer is astonishing. Now, predictably, the Republicans who are against this haven't even read it. Many of them voiced their opposition to it before they saw the bill. Now, Republican James Langford, who is one of the sponsors of this bill, along with Democrat Chris Murphy, explained that. And here's his response to Mike Johnson's, out, uh, Mike Johnson's outright rejection of the bill. If this bill reaches the House, it will be dead on arrival. Your thoughts? Yeah, un unfortunately, he would step out and be able to see that right away before, obviously, he had had a chance to be able to read it as well and to be able to go through it. The key aspect of this, again, is are we as Republicans going to have press conferences and complain the border's bad and then intentionally leave it open? After the worst month in American history in December, now we've got to actually determine, are we going to just complain about things or are we going to actually address and to change as many things as we can? If we have the shot, and it's amazing to me, if, if I go back two months ago and say we had the shot under a Democrat president to dramatically increase detention beds, deportation flights, lock down the border, to be able to change the asylum laws, right. to be able to accelerate the process, no one would have believed it. And now no one actually wants to be able to fix it and says, I don't want to even debate it. I don't want to discuss it. We have to decide right. as Republicans, what are we going to actually to do about the border, leave it open or actually leave it closed.
I think you know the answer to that question, James. But let's not try to pretend like this bill addresses the root causes here because it doesn't. But even if it did, Republicans don't want to solve the issue of immigration because if they do, then they lose a scapegoat that is very valuable. I mean, how do you win elections if you can't pawn all of America's problems off on people with no money and no power? Who would their corporate donors exploit for cheap labor indefinitely if all of a sudden immigrants could get citizenship status or amnesty? They don't want to solve this issue. That's been clear from the start. But as you saw, Langford, who's a sponsor of the bill, said that Johnson vocalized his opposition to it before he even read it, which is to be expected if you know the GOP's MO. Now, other GOP blowhards like Nancy Mace also decided that she was against it before she read it, even though she's pretending that she read it. But watch, because the Fox News host is going to call her out on her lying. Have you read all 370 pages of this bill? We are, we are working through it. We have about 50 pages more to go. But from what we can tell, and I'm going to put forth a statement once we finish reading the bill, the measures that we feel are extremely undesirable, that keep our border open, that water down the asylum system, um, it's not good for the country, well, they say quite exactly frankly. exactly the opposite. That's why I'm, I'm asking. I mean, you claim you've read through most of the bill, but the way you're talking about it makes it seem like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> That's basically what the Fox News host was saying there. I mean, it's got to be sad for the dozen or so GOP policy wonks in the country who are realizing that Republicans don't actually give a shit about policy. It's all about bluster and huffing and puffing, especially during election years. But the ones that do care right now, they've got to be perplexed with the rejection of this bill, given how draconian it is. It is everything they asked for, but they can't support it because Biden did it. Can't give a Democrat credit on anything. Now, I want to show you Fox News trying to sell this to Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who isn't important in this conversation because this is a governor of the state of Arkansas. And She's not going to be voting on this because she's not a member of Congress, but for some reason she's weighing in. But she's going to explain why she's against it. But in doing so, she's not just going to look foolish, but she's going to contradict herself within 10 seconds of speaking. If you enforce all that, it sounds pretty good on its face. And the other thing he said is that it builds more wall. Uh, this is a Democratic president who would be signing this if it were to pass out of Congress in its current form. Uh, we, not, when you spend the money on the wall is to be debated. A lot of that comes in 2025 and beyond. But just on its face, Governor, what do you like about what they have done inside this bill? Well, I think anything that we're doing that makes it harder for people to just freely walk in. Uh, right now, we have had, under this administration, completely and totally open borders. In the last month alone, they picked up more people from the terrorist watch list than they did the entire four years of Donald Trump's presidency. So we have to put harsher and tougher restrictions in place. In the state of Arkansas, we took in and seized so much fentanyl that it would kill 2.8 million people. And that's just in our state alone. That's almost the entire population of Arkansas. I'm not saying there aren't some good merits of this legislation, but if they're not going to take serious action at the congressional level, then Republican governors are going to continue to step up where the federal government is failing. That was absolutely incredible. So she said the borders are completely and totally open, yet in the same breath said in the last month alone, they also picked up more people from the terrorist watch list than the entire four years of Trump's presidency, which is bizarre because when you say it like that, it almost makes it seem like the borders aren't completely open and they're doing a lot of apprehensions. It almost makes it seem like Biden is actually more effective than Trump at policing the borders. But please, Sarah, continue to explain to us how the borders are wide open and anyone can just cross at any time. All you have to do to get over the border is walk up to an ICE agent and say, hello, sir, I'd like to enter the country illegally, please. All I have are the clothes on my back and this 10 pound bag of cocaine. And the ICE agent would have to say, well, you know what? I don't want to let you through, but because of Biden, I have to let everyone in. So um, come on in, sir. I'll hold the door open for you. I mean, I'm being hyperbolic, but like this is literally what some Americans think. That's what they actually think happens. And it's because of people like Sarah I almost called her Sarah Palin, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, who lied to them constantly. Like, this is why we're all stupid as a country. It's because we're all misinformed by people who are in power. Now, if we're trying to steel man the argument of someone like Sarah Huckabee Sanders, they say that since there's thousands of daily border crossings, well, that is effectively an open border. It's tantamount to an open border. Now, the problem with this argument, aside from it being a lie, is that it presupposes that there wasn't all of these border crossings under Donald Trump. But here's the problem and the dirty little secret that Republicans don't want to let you know about. There were.
there were still thousands of crossings under Trump because we've never tried to actually address the issue in a meaningful way. Now, right-wing ideologues go to great lengths to hide this fact from their global audiences. Case in point. I would also remind folks during the Trump administration, we also had days of more than 4,000 people that were illegally crossing the border under the Trump administration in 2019, and they were struggling because there's gaps and loopholes in the law. Yeah, this, but Senator, you know, you know, that those, Donald Trump, so we were at a 45-year low in illegal around. crossings under Donald Trump, and, and that's that's just a fact. I, I, I've got the, the oh, no, evidence to... Dramatically fewer. Uh, a 45-year low under Donald Trump in 2019. 2019. We also had days of 3,000, 4,000, 4,500 that were happening. But nothing like period. what we've seen right now. Okay, let, let me just... Trying to figure out how to be able to implement it. Mm -mm, nope, nope. La, 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 la. I can't hear you, Senator. Crossings were much lower under Donald Trump. Senator, please shut the fuck up. We desperately need people to believe that Trump's cruel policies were a useful deterrent. Otherwise, Americans might begin to question whether or not Trump was as effective as they remember. Or worse, Americans might actually wonder, hey, maybe it seems like being really mean to immigrants doesn't actually accomplish what we want it to accomplish. See the propaganda in action, don't you? But what we're seeing here is a strong divide emerging between two camps within the Republican Party with two leaders, Mitch McConnell and Mike Johnson, on opposite sides of each side here, which is interesting to me. And this creates real friction to the point where some Senate Republicans want to McCarthy McConnell. I'm not joking about that. Ross Story reports Senate Republican Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, the longest serving party leader in the history of the U.S. Senate, is facing increased rebellion from the far right faction of his conference with calls for his ouster in including from one longtime GOP senator who declared, we need new leadership now, and a reporter calling it a hint at mutiny. Quote, brawl erupts in Senate GOP over border security supplemental is the AM headline at Punchbowl News, with the news outlet reporting, quote, the bill's release Sunday night was like pouring gasoline on the fire that is the Senate GOP internal war. Senators and aides publicly and privately questioned whether a majority of the Republican conference would back it, a key metric. There were even calls for an immediate leadership change from some GOP senators and conservative outside groups. Now, the call from leadership change comes from Mike Lee, who tweeted, quote, this feels like an elaborate practical joke. I cannot understand how any Republican would think this was a good idea or anything other than an unmitigated disaster. We need new leadership now. But he's not alone. Frank Thorpe 5 of NBC News reports Schumer on a call with reporters now on the supplemental aid bill, quote, I have never worked more closely with Leader McConnell on any piece of legislation as we did on this. Now, Schumer said this to reassure Republicans that it was as conservative as they wanted it to be, but Josh Hawley responded saying, mm, that's the problem. Now, Ted Cruz also took him at McConnell indirectly while lying about the bill, tweeting, quote, the Senate Republican leadership's border bill with the Democrats doesn't solve the problem. It will allow 1.8 million illegal aliens into our country yearly. Joe Biden and the Democrats will use this legislation to say they tried to fix the border and then blame House Republicans for not passing it. And to be clear, he's lying about what the bill does. But to be fair, I don't think that he's wrong when it comes to the politics of it, because if House Republicans say they want to address the border, but then turn down legislation that does just that, of course, Biden is going to use that against them. But this dynamic here is so interesting to me, because in the House, Mike Johnson is dealing with a faction of fascists who would quickly McCarthy him if he got out of line. So he can't support it if he wants to keep his job. Whereas in the Senate, McConnell is the one who's actually rebelling against his caucus, and as a result, they now are rebelling against him, and they want to McCarthy him. Now, they don't have the power to do to McConnell what Republicans in the House did to McCarthy, but that hasn't stopped them from saying they want to, and it's also led to tensions boiling over. Andrew Desiderio of Punchbowl News reports, quote, fireworks at Senate GOP comms directors meeting this a.m. over border bill. After Senator Lankford's team gave presentation on the bill and opened up for cues, Senator Lee's staff was yelling at Lankford's staff per multiple people in room. Lee aide eventually left room saying betrayal, and then he adds that the room erupted in laughter after the Lee aide stormed out. So this is an all-out shit show, and Republicans are desperately trying to keep things under under wrap so that way it doesn't get as ugly as the McCarthy ouster got. But I mean, it's not working and things are spilling out into the public and it doesn't help that a lot of Republicans benefit from intraparty warfare because it makes them look like the most pure Republicans. So they're going to the media, they're puffing out their chest and they're trying to look tough. But I mean, it's a shit show right now. You have Republicans crossing chamber lines in a sense, meaning that like they're supporting the GOP leader in the Senate when they're in the House, when their boss 
Mike Johnson is against it. I'm talking about Dan Crenshaw, who said, if you are against something without knowing what it is, that is the height of stupidity. And he took some shots at senators who are against this, calling it just befuddling. Not his words, mine, but nonetheless, this is what he says. I'm extremely disappointed in the very strange maneuvering by many on the right to, to, to torpedo uh, a potential border reform bill. If we have a bill that on net significantly decreases illegal immigration and we sabotage that, that is, that is inconsistent with what we told our voters we would do. People will make up whatever reasons they, they want to. There's a number of them, I'm sure. But it would be a, a pretty unacceptable dereliction of, of your duty. So we are watching a GOP civil war unfold before our very eyes again. And I think that, you know, Republicans in general probably wouldn't support this because they would never go along with something that a Democratic president wants and they don't want to give him a win, especially during an election year. But regardless, I think that Trump and his strong opposition to this legislation is really what solidifies their position. And I think that Sawyer Hackett put it best, tweeting the Republican Party in a nutshell. On Monday, they're going to kill the harshest immigration deal in decades because their nominee wants to run on this issue. On Tuesday, they're going to launch an impeachment inquiry into the DHS secretary for for not being harsher on immigration. Exactly, and that is a different story for a different day, but they are hypocrites, that's the TLDR. Now, that's not surprising when it comes to Republicans, but on the other side of the aisle, dumbass Democrats like Chuck Schumer, for example, thinks that he can still reason with Republicans like uh, like Johnson. He thinks that he can get through to Johnson. So let's watch this pathetic pitch that he makes the Speaker Johnson on Morning Joe. Do the right thing. You know what the right thing to do is. You know we need to fix our border. You know that it has to be bipartisan. The bill that you passed didn't get a single Democratic vote in the House or the Senate. How are you going to get anything done? Or do you just want to make a speech as you admittedly say the border is you say the border is in chaos? Do something about it. Don't just politically posture. Listen, Mike, I believe you're going to do the right thing. OK, we all want to fuck over immigrants. I get that you're mad because this bill doesn't have death camps. But what would Jesus do? He would support this bill where we fuck over immigrants. OK, do the right thing. Listen, <laughs> on a serious note, though, it should really genuinely unnerve everyone how quickly Democrats are willing to go full fascist if they think that there's any political gain whatsoever in doing that. It's just, it's why there's this saying, cut a liberal and a fascist bleeds, right? Now, I would typically say that this feels like Democrats are giving the finger to their base as they become more Trumpian, and I think that that's true to an extent. But honestly, I don't think that Democratic Party loyalists are against this. I think they would probably support all of Trump's policies so long as it was done by a Democrat and they used flowery rhetoric while doing it. But as little faith as I have at this point in the electorate, the ones who are principled, who would be opposed to what Democrats are doing if they knew, are being lied to, which is why so many of them aren't speaking up. For example, just try to put aside in this next clip Schumer's insufferable dick-sucking of Republicans and try to focus on how he's trying to sell this to voters like he's speaking to republicans in this clip but this is on liberal msnbc so in actuality he's making a pitch to democratic party voters look at how he disingenuously sells this bill if this does pass the senate which is you're confident will do i'm confident hopeful is the right word this is hard and our republican senators we need a bunch of them are under a lot of pressure from the right wing trump part of the party so let's do it in two parts talk to us a little more about the dynamics in the senate and why you are hopeful and then secondly but even if you get it through the senate if he's saying it's dead what happens next how do the dynamics change good questions both how do we get it through the senate senators have to rise to the occasion a large number of senators have shown real courage senator langford I mean, he was chosen by Mitch McConnell to negotiate this because he's a right. He's very conservative. He's not in the middle of where the Republican senators are. He's somewhat to the right, a very religious, <laughs> deeply God fearing man. And um, he had the courage to do it. McConnell, you know, I mean, he, maybe I'm not supposed to say something good about McConnell because the right wing will go, ow, 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 which they always do. Um, but. He's shown courage because he knows it's the right thing to do. I've had private talks with McConnell. He knows what will happen to America if Putin and Ukraine succeed. And we have some of these right-wing Republicans in the Senate who used to decry Putin and now say, don't aid Ukraine. All political and really horribly political because of so much is at stake. So how do we, so let's assume that our senators in the Senate rise to the occasion. 
okay? And I hope they will. Everyone's talking to each other. Once they look at the bill, when, when, when Langford showed some of the Republicans the bill, they finally saw what was in it and say, oh, this is a real compromise. This isn't to sell out one way or the other. Um, if it passes the Senate, there are a large number of sen- congressmen in the House. First, there's a big group of hawks in the middle, and they care about funding Ukraine. They always have. And uh, the strategy of Johnson is right now do nothing. Uh, there's a large number of pro-Israel people. They care about that. Then there's a large number of, of, of progressive legislators, I'm included, who want to see that Gaza, the people in Gaza don't starve and we get that aid to them. Um, plus, there are some who care about Taiwan and there's money there to bolster us against China's aggression there. You know, we're in an aggressive world. So he's trying to downplay the barbarity when it comes to immigration, and he's trying to sell it to liberals who are concerned about Ukraine, and also trying to sell it to progressives who are concerned about Gaza. But, I mean, those provisions were obviously attached to entice people who weren't thrilled about the mean immigration policies that they're supporting. But notice how insulting his pitch is here, especially to progressives. Let's put up the graphic that they showed on the screen. So the humanitarian aid that they're offering to Gazans is $10 billion split with Ukraine. But if you're a progressive who wants that crucial aid to go to Palestinians, well, guess what? You've got to support even more money going to weapons to be used against them in order to get that crucial aid. This is such fucking bullshit. This is downright morally bankrupt. And here's what I say. Chuck, how about you, instead of pandering to Republicans and kissing their ass on national television, take that bill and shove it up your asshole. Just do that and then go fuck yourself. Like, what a piece of shit. Anyone who supports this bill is a bad person, period, full stop. You don't have a moral conscience if you support something like this. But guess what? If you don't have a moral conscience and you also happen to be a soulless ghoul, but you oppose it for some reason because you're a partisan hack, Guess what? Desperate times call for desperate measures. I'll accept that too. I accept outcomes in this situation. So if Republicans aren't opposing this for moral reasons, but they're still opposing it, okay. I mean, things are so bad that we're in a situation where fascist Republicans managed to reverse engineer a positive outcome for the country just by being petulant dickheads. I'll take it. Look, it's not the first time that they've checkmated themselves and tried to pretend like this was a win for them, but I'll take it. I mean, back when Obama tried to team up with Tea Party Republicans to cut Social Security, they rejected his offer then too because it wasn't harsh enough, and then they talked about how, oh, we opposed Obama, and they're going to do the same thing. But you know what? I don't give a shit. I think that the outcomes are what we should focus on, and the policy, not the party, is what we should be looking at. And if the outcome here is good, then I'll take it. And that means if they kill the bill, I don't care why they kill it, I just care that they kill the bill. But in conclusion, shame on any politician who supports this morally reprehensible legislation. I mean, Democrats are pivoting to the right in hopes that they're going to be able to pick up moderate voters after pissing off their entire base by unconditionally supporting a genocide in Gaza. And Republicans, they don't really want to solve any of the issues they claim to care about because then if they do that, they won't be able to run on anything in the next election. So you've got to keep at least a couple of scapegoats and not solve problems so that way you can run on it. It's all a show, right? That's the conclusion. Bottom line, it's all a show and we are witnessing quintessential political theater here. And you should know that. Just kidding. It's not the end of the video yet because as we're about to finish editing this, guess what happened? Sawyer Hackett reports that Mitch McConnell is now whipping votes against the bill that he supported this morning, and now Langford is not committing to supporting his own bill. I guess they felt like they didn't have the political capital needed to get it passed, and they already exhausted too much whipping votes for it, so they're against it. Who knows? They're a joke, but um, I guess Mitch McConnell solved his problem of not getting McCarthy'd by uh, caving? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. This party is fucking stupid, so there's the latest update for you. It'll probably change by the time you see this video, but nonetheless, that's where we're at right now. They're now against the bill that they were in favor of, so cool. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
vagina. <laughs> <laughs>